Welcome to the Boss Lady Coaching Podcast. I'm your host, Holly Sexton, along with Boss Lady Coaching founder, Megan Stith. Megan's on this side. I did it right. Yay. She's on this side. <laughs> October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we're talking about all types of cancer and how the disease specifically affects women, all the way from caregiving to recovery to loss. And thank you so much to Auburn Curry. She spoke with us last week about her son's cancer diagnosis, his treatment, and how it has and is continuing to impact her life. And Auburn's podcast is available on iTunes and on SoundCloud at Boss Lady Coaching Podcast. Well, thanks for getting us together, Holly. And you look radiant. Everyone leave a comment about how fabulous Holly looks today. And yes. uh, <laughs> we are grateful to welcome another guest who has faced cancer head on. Erica Cole is an entrepreneur, mom, wife, and owner of Lady Lou Curves Boutique in E Town. So Erica, welcome. Welcome, Erica. Hi, hey, everybody. <laughs> so, Erica, I've been in your shop a few times when you first started your embroidery business. I was the first one to, to jump on board and, and loved getting my red U of L sweater. And yes. It was a good time. And, and tell me now, before we get into the conversation too deep, Lady Lou Curves Boutique is doing a special monthly box and that is going really well for you. Yes, it is amazing. It's our um, subscription box. And so what it is is ladies subscribe and they pay monthly and every month they get a box um, from us and it's a surprise. They don't know what's in it. Um, so they get three to four items each month and at least one of them's monogram. So it's for all the Southern ladies who love monograms. And then, so we just, we love it. We love hearing them say how much they love their box. It's like a little present to them each month. So we know how hard women work. And so it's nice for them to have a little treat for themselves to look forward to. And I'm so glad that, that it has just blown up. Like people have gotten really excited about it. And, and you're, I, I saw on a post, you're like, we sold out, which yes. Yes, it is so funny. And, and for me and my mom to be able, I mean, we get to set these up and make sure everything coordinates and, and each month we have a theme, you know, and so it's so much fun for us to kind of shop and pack them. It's, it's like Christmas every month packing presents for people. So <laughs> I'm glad it's going really well. And I need a new hair tie. So I need to come and see you. One of those that doesn't break your hair off. Yeah, the spiral ones. Yeah, the spiral <laughs> ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put that on my on my grocery list to come and see. But I was very, very excited about that. And you and your mom look like you have so much fun together. You do a lot of your social media videos together. Uh, what do your fans, friends, and customers call your mom? Everyone calls your mama Lou. Um, I think I'm, you know, on, I'm not really sure how we got the name Lady Lou. Honestly, it just kind of happened. And so everyone just kind of calls her Mama Lou. And so she feels like the mama bear to everybody that comes in. I think <laughs> she loves it. <laughs> She's fantastic at customer service. Um, yes. I, um, she sold me the softest pair of, of leggings ever. And, and I think that she would have helped me like it, it's assist. It, she'll assist you. Well, like if you just look at her and say, I'm fine. Thank you. Then yep. she can go. Um, but if you're like, I need some help. She's like, I got that. So yeah. And if you bring your kids out. in, they'll get a popsicle. So um, you know, she takes care of everybody who comes in. <laughs> She's got that loving grandma thing going on too. Absolutely. So you're a small business owner. And one, one of the things that really attracted me to Lady Lou Curves Boutique is your size range, is that you really are inclusive. And I appreciate that. Oh yeah, absolutely. We started out mobile. And so we had a big 24 foot trailer that we remodeled into a boutique and it just naturally, we had one size of it, small through large and the other side was plus size. So everything was kind of even. And so we kind of, we've definitely kept that. That was the main thing that people loved when they came in. So everything we get, we try to get small through three X. Um, sometimes it doesn't happen, but we do our best that everything's got all sizes. I love that. I love that inclusion. That's fantastic. So you went, have been and are going through a pandemic. I think willful thinking there, we just want it to be over. Um, but as a small business owner, um, you had a rock, rocky start in March to the mm -hmm. year. first quarter, I'm sure made things difficult, uh, but you do a lot of online sales. And, and in that time frame in February and March, uh, you also found out that your mom had cancer. So how did that process happen? Did she give you a call? Did she come see you? What was that? What, how did you hear about the news? 
Well, um, with us being together every single day at the store, we definitely are right in the middle of things together. And so um, what happened really kind of her story, she hasn't had, she hadn't had a mammogram in 16 years. She's scared to death of doctors. She, I mean, it's a true phobia. She hates going to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And so she didn't have a family doctor, nothing like that. And so my brother and my husband started going to Dr. Chisholm, Dr. Amanda Chisholm here in town. And um, she found a clostiotoma in my brother's ear. She found out my husband has asthma. So she's helped them a lot. And so finally, um, she said, mom said, you know, I need a family doctor. And so if she's helped them so much, I'll trust her and go to her. And she's built a relationship with, Ms. with Dr. Chisholm. She's been incredible. And finally, she said in January to her, she said, you know, you're, you're behind on a lot of different tests, you know, at your age that you should have had. And so she said, would you be willing to start trying some? And so mom was like, sure, let's, let's just start with a mammogram. You know, let's start there. That seems simple compared to some of the other things that she needed. And so um, she went for her first mammogram. She did that by herself because it seemed like it was going to be just a regular old thing. And so they called her and said they found um, an abnormal spot and she needed to go for a second ultra or a second mammogram with a possible ultrasound. So of course that's when she got scared and all the phobia started creeping back up. And so it's kind of like living her worst nightmare, you know? And so oh, I was able to go with her. That was before everything shut down. So I was able to go with her for her mammogram. And so she went and we were sitting in the waiting room after, you know, in her little room after the mammogram and they said, okay, the doctor's calling for the ultrasound. And so that got her really scared. And she started, she started going in flight mode. She was ready to leave. I mean, she was getting dressed. She's like, I'm walking out. And I said, you know, mom, I, I rode with you. And so I'm not leaving this building until you get this ultrasound. So I was like, you can leave, but you're going to have to come back and get me, you know? And so, um, I, we, I talked her into, you know, doing that ultrasound and that afternoon, Dr. Chisholm got the results. And so she went ahead and called her and, um, and I wasn't with her at the moment, but she called me and, and let me know what was going on and things. So it wasn't until, um, mid-February when she got the biopsy of the official results, but, um, you know, I was able to be with her when she found out. And that had to be really overwhelming, like how to make treatment decisions and what plan to follow. So can you tell us a little bit about how you approached that treatment plan and, um, you know, how you made some of those decisions and whether you would change anything based on the experience you've had so far? Sure. Um, so whenever you hear the word cancer, they they rush everything. Everything happens so fast. Appointments just get thrown at you. Um, and so, you know, you, you're kind of just saying, okay, you know, we've never experienced cancer in our family. So we're just kind of what, you know, whatever you all say. Um, one thing that we always told her is we were staying here in E-Town and we always told her if she felt uncomfortable with anyone or anything that we would make the move up to Louisville or somewhere else, um, wherever she needed you know, and so that was, that was the part of it that I felt like we had the most control over is where to go, and so she decided to stay here in E-Town. Um, she went to the cancer center out in um, Robin Brook, um, and that's where we went, and, and she's done the whole process here. Dr. Karen Bronkhurst, she's the one who did her lobectomy, um, and then she went to Dr. Sithers, which is the radiologist, and honestly, it, it, I think it was amazing. Every single person that we came in contact with were exactly who she needed. Um, everyone was awesome. Everyone was caring and they understood her phobias and talked her through it. They let her cry when she needed to cry. You know, um, Dr. Scyther, it's kind of funny because she said he was, when she went there for radiology, that was where, um, you know, the pandemic had hit. And so I wasn't able to go in the, the radiologist with her. And that was probably the hardest thing. And that first day she said, I don't like this guy, you know? <laughs> and so she, he was, he was very straightforward. He was very, this is what we're doing. Here's the percentage chances of it coming back. Very, but he ended up being her absolute favorite. You know, he, he connected with her, his nurses, you know, it, it's kind of crazy. Her first day of radio, radiation, she was terrified. And I wasn't able to be there with her um, through the pandemic. But then there was a nurse there, Sarah, and she, her mom was actually having surgery that day. And she couldn't be there with her. And so the two of them just completely connected. It's like Sarah needed a mom. 
mom needed a daughter. And so I was so grateful for the people here at E-Town that they were able to take care of her when we weren't able to be there with her. I, I wouldn't change anything. I think a lot of people would tell her, oh, you're staying in E-Town. Why wouldn't you go to Louisville? You know, and um, I would just tell everybody, if, if you're going through the process, give E-Town a chance um, because we've got some great people here. That is so encouraging to hear. And uh, boss lady, um, Lisa Boone is, uh, she, she said the same thing. She went through her entire process of recovery in Elizabethtown. So yeah. that's, that's so good to hear. Um, meanwhile, while this is happening, and like you said, it goes so fast, how are you managing um, the store? How are you managing the boutique and online sales? Well, honestly, um, you know, as crazy as it sounds, God makes good out of everything, even the bad stuff. And so during the pandemic, um, we had to close, right? So honestly, I tried to work the online sales as much as I could, um, but really we just kind of let it, let it slide and we just did the best we could. And um, especially during like the radiation and all of her recovery, I mean, you've met her, she's not gonna sit down, you know? And so closing the store forced her to be able to sit down and to heal. And so um, it, it just, it all worked out. It's, you know, it's all gonna work out. So um, we've just, we did the best we could. We rode through it. You know, my kids spent a lot of time at the store with me. They, that's their second home too. And so um, we've just kind of worked through it all. So what has treating cancer taught you about your resources and about yourself? Well, I definitely think our resources, I think about, you know, the Cancer Center here in E-Town and things, we've learned that we've got great people here. Um, whenever it comes to the community and our, and our people and the friends and the connections that we have, um, you can't ask for a better community than E-Town. Um, the people here are absolutely amazing. You know, the, to me, I think of whenever you hear somebody and know somebody who has cancer, you, you know, you have a job to play, whether that means shooting them a text, telling them I'm thinking about you, um, wearing pink and taking a picture with it and posting it, you know, just, just things like that. It was absolutely overwhelming to her. And she's still so humbled by the people that would um, touch base with her and um, call her and come visit. And, you know, when someone has cancer, they think about it 24 seven, it, it never goes away. And so, I was so grateful for them because they were able to, it was almost a distraction at night. She'd say, oh no, you know, I've got to catch up with all these messages and stuff. And so it gave her something to do. It gave her, you know, people to connect with. And so um, it was amazing. Um, when it comes to myself, honestly, I mean, I wish I could say that it taught me that I'm stronger than I thought I was or something like that. But I don't think so. Um, you just get, you know, life hands you something and you just get through it. I mean, there's no other option than to push forward. Um, I think for me, it taught me that I don't have to hold my emotions in. <laughs> I'm someone who, who doesn't like to show someone when I'm, I'm emotional. I like to hold it in. And if you're listening, that's a terrible way to live. Do not live that way. It's awful. <laughs> So I think I've, I've learned to be a little, just a little bit more open about what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, um, and that, that it's okay. It's okay to let that out. And I think it, it helps. It's amazing how much that helps other people. You know, I've watched my mom and she'll just cry right there in the store if someone comes in and asks her a question or how she's doing and things. And, and people are so encouraged by her honesty and her being so real. She just is who she is, you know. And I think I'm, I've learning through that, that um, I just have to just let it out and that it'll be okay, you know, and hopefully it encourages other people along the way. And I, I'm really touched by your honesty in saying that there was no grand lesson <laughs> that, that no. received. There's no been, there's, there's been no voice from, you know, on high that, that has been like, this is the answer to all the things. There hasn't been revelation and life is very much like that sometimes sometimes it's just about getting up in the morning and putting both feet on the floor and getting through the day um, yeah and and I think that alone is such a powerful message so thank you for sharing that yeah I mean that's any of us going through anything that's all you can do you know so it's not about being strong it's about being honest and and just getting through it and I'm so glad to hear that she had support in those messages and encouragement, but 
how can people support caregivers like you or those loved ones that are struggling with this? Because I think you probably carried a lot of that anxiety and all that responsibility. And, um, you know, I think it's great that we have social media and people can say, you know, thoughts and prayers, but how can we better help or more effectively help people who are going through these types of experiences, even if they're the ones that aren't dealing with cancer firsthand? Well, you know, I think about the way I tried to help her. And at first, I, I felt like I needed to be the tough one. I needed to be the one that said, it's going to be okay, you know, and those kind of things. And, and I, I don't think that's necessarily the right way to take it. Um, I think when you hear about someone going through something like cancer, you think, I don't know what to say, or I'm so sorry. And it, it kind of goes back on you and how you are not sure what to do, right? But I think the most important thing is, is to turn that around and say, how, you know, just how are you doing? You know, how was that appointment? How do you feel? And they'll say it and, and they'll bring it out. And, um, you know, most people, when they would they come in or ask me how's she doing and I'd give them the updates and let them know and I remember one person in particular she came in and she asked me and I was telling her everything and she said but you're not okay you know and I think that's really I kind of broke down at that moment and you know it's someone that I've known for a long time but we don't talk every day we don't I was like afterwards I'm not sure why I broke down but just someone acknowledging but you, you know but you're not okay and so I think just acknowledging that that person is, is hurting and that they're struggling and you don't have to have an answer. You don't have to have some perfect answer that's gonna make them feel better. You know, you just have to say, I acknowledge and I'm sorry, you know. Um, that's really powerful because you're, you're talking about feeling seen. Mm -hmm. When someone sees us, we spend a lot of time talking about individuality, but what you're talking about there is just like, that is, Erica, you know, somebody yep. saw you and yep. that's, that was so touching for you. And it's so interesting that that was enough for you to, to feel supported or yep. to be supported. Yep. I mean, that's really, she didn't really say anything else. She gave me a hug and, and I was, but it made me feel better that day. You know, um, she, like I said, she didn't have some perfect answer. Um, like you said, I think that was a good way of putting it. She just acknowledged me and what I was feeling. So, yeah. And that's helpful to hear because like, I know I'm a fixer. So if I see someone in pain, I'm like, can I bring you something? You're going to get that pizza e-gift card from me, like doing something about it. And that has good intentions, but I think you bring up a way more powerful point, which is just asking and listening and not trying to make it easy when sometimes a hard time is just a hard time. And to embrace that um, mm -hmm. just trying to jump in and fix it and make it go away right oh. yeah but, yeah for sure Megan that is so true I'm over here like bobblehead like, yes that is so true and I think uh, part of that I'll blame on boss lady coaching <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because now I so it's indoctrinated to me to look for solutions mm -hmm. everything is about finding the solution or finding the tool or the person or the someone with the knowledge to connect me or connect this other person or the resource that they need. And, and it's such a good reminder to say, Hey, sometimes you just need to stop and see another person and give them a hug and, and ask them how they are or say, you know, you don't have to tell me how you are. I see all this stuff that you've got on you and I see that you're hurting and here's a hug and I'm thinking about you. So I could totally see how that would have turned your day around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So to wrap up, the time goes by really quickly. Mm -hmm. What do you want viewers and listeners to know most about the journey that you've had this year with cancer? Well, <clears throat> gosh, I don't know. I think, I think, like I said, um, I just, I want people to know that if they know someone who has cancer, that they, like I said, they have a role to play and they need to do it. You know, being, feeling awkward, feeling like I'm not sure to, what to say, I'm not sure what to do. Um, just send the text, just go visit them and, and, and know that they need that more than you realize. And, um, you know, you can't make it better. I remember, and you know, the, her biopsy days and things, I could, there's no way I can make that better. There's no way I can make her feel good or laugh those days. All I could do is just sit in the waiting room and just sit there 
you know, and just let her cry or whatever. And so I think um, that's probably the most important thing that I've learned through the process is you don't, you don't have to constantly be the one to say, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And I, I would want to do that. Um, but then everyone knows someone who it wasn't okay and it, it didn't work out. And so that reality is in your head when you're dealing with cancer. And so just saying it's going to be okay, that, that doesn't help. What helps is just being there with them. Oh, that's really powerful. Um, you're right. We're fixers, Megan. <laughs> we want to, well, this is what we can do to help. Um, how powerful the lesson in that. And, and I don't know if you got to listen to Auburn's podcast with us, but she, um, she said the same thing, essentially. She was like, if you feel, if you don't know what to say, you feel anxious or nervous about it, or you feel awkward, um, whatever that, um, whatever your instinct is, if it's a text, if it's to do something, if it's to stop in, if whatever it is, to not be held back by that fear of awkwardness, um, mm -hmm. but instead to be vulnerable and just do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us and uh, hopefully Lady Lou, <laughs> Mama Lou, if, if she's Mama Lou, are you Lady Lou? I guess so, that's what people say. <laughs> And then my, my 10 year old, she does some stuff for the work too. So they've called her little Lou. So it just works. <laughs> I love how there's generations in the workplace there. Well, before we go, uh, we'd love for everybody to support your business and visit you. Uh, what is your location? We are in Helmwood Plaza in E-Town. Uh, most people know where Roses is. We're in that same parking center across, across the parking lot. And we'd love and, to have everybody. And uh, people can also shop online too, right? How do they find yes. you? Yes, absolutely. We are big on Facebook. We are also on Instagram at, at Lady Lou Curves. And then we have a website, llcurves.com. All right. Well, thank you so much. And send your best to your mama from us. Yes, absolutely. And, and big love to her. Yes. Thank you so much to Erica. Thank you, Megan. I appreciate it. And thank you all for watching and sharing. And uh, we'd love to hear your stories as well. You can find us on SoundCloud and iTunes at Boss Lady Coaching. And you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Boss Lady Coaching Podcast. And we're online at BeTheBossCoaching.com. We'll see you later.